it's pretty simple i'm only gonna get the basics in here so um right here if you don't know what i'm doing is i'm basically running a command whenever the player types in slash gui space dirt this gui will pop up so if you don't know how to get here i have a video tutorial on that linked down below and in a card on screen right now Anyways, let's get into it. First thing I want to do is get the player from this instance. So we're going to go ahead and just create a little player variable here with the player from the... This is not an event. We are doing a command. All right, brain. We're going to cast the sender to a player. And then after that, we can get the inventory from the player. Or we can create a new inventory because this isn't the player's inventory. We're going to make a new inventory that's full of dirt. So the player can get all the free dirt they want, all right? So the first thing we want to do is create an inventory. So we do that like this. So we do inventory and we can name this whatever you want. You can name it inv for short for inventory, but I'm gonna name it GUI. And then we're going to create a new inventory here. So we can do this using a method in the bucket class called create inventory because inventories are server side so you need to make it on the server and there should be three let's see owner type owner size title is what we want so for the first thing the owner uh, all you have to do for that is put null I don't know what that's for I think it's for like in case it's a mob opening an inventory but I don't think mobs can open inventory so I don't know why that's a feature um, Anyways, enough of that. This has the size has to be a multiple of nine because uh, chests have nine slots in each row. So we'll do like 18. We'll do two rows of free dirt. Or no, we'll do 45. We'll do all the rows of free dirt. I think max is 45 or the next step up, which is 54. Don't know which is the max chest size, but one of those is. And we can go ahead and put our title in here third. It's a string, so we can just do color. Is there brown? No. There is now with the new colors, but I don't know how to do that. So I'll learn how to do that with you for you guys. And I'll uh and I'll teach you, don't worry. So we're gonna go ahead here and do gold for our free dirt sign. We'll do all caps. Free dirt. Alright. So now we have created our very own GUI. So now what we have to do is create a new item stack for every single item we want to put in here. So if you're making a menu uh, instead of like an inventory that the player can take stuff out of, you'd have to make a new item stack for every item, change the lore, the display name, all that. I'll show you how to do that part, but um, you have to do that for every single item. So first thing let's do is create a new item stack here. And we can go ahead and just name this dirt because it's going to be dirt. Let's be honest, you already know. So we'll do new item stack. And this item stack, we have to make it out of material. So we'll do material dot dirt. All right, and we could leave this here, but it's going to be just stack size of one. I want it to be a full stack size of 64 blocks, so I'm going to go ahead and put an amount in right there. So the next thing we want to do is to change the display name, the lore, anything like that, any of the item's properties. You have to edit the item meta. So we have to make a variable for item meta. So we can just name this dirt meta. Or uh, no, we don't want to make a new item meta. We want to get the item meta from the dirt. And there we go. Alright, so to make the display name is really simple, but the lore is a little more difficult, but it's still pretty easy. So let's do the display name first. So we can go ahead and edit the dirt meta we just got. Then we can set display name to whatever we want. We uh we'll we'll leave it dirt I think or no, we'll make it free dirt. And then to edit the lore, 
the lore is saved as a list of strings. So what you have to do is make a list of strings and then set it to the lore. So we're going to do that just like this. So we're going to make a list of strings. Since the lore is multiple lines, if you put in multiple strings, you will get that multiple line effect. But I just want to do one line, so I'm only going to put in one string. So my string, I'm going to put in... Uh, I'm going to make it white because normally it's like a purple color for the lore. We'll do white. And we'll say this dirt was free. Alright. And now we want to set the lore. So how do we do that? Well, what we do is do a little bit of this. We do dirt meta dot set lore. Pretty simple, self-explanatory, and we put our list of strings right there. But we're not done with the dirt item yet. We still have to set the dirt item to the new dirt meta because this dirt meta is no longer a part of this dirt var dirt variable. It's now its own own item. So we got to go ahead and set it back to the dirt. So we're gonna do dirt dot set item meta to dirt meta so now it has all those cool things we just put in there so now that we have our dirt fully done how do we put it in every single slot well for that we're going to use a for loop so we don't have to type out um every single slot and do that no thank you so we're going to start at zero for our for loop and then every single time we want to check to see if it's less than our inventory's complete size, because it starts at zero, so we can leave this at zero, and it'll go up to one below the max size, which is GUI dot size, get size. All right, and then we want to go ahead and just increase by one every time. So, the first thing, or the only thing we're gonna do here is to GUI dot set item, and then we want to put our, our uh, item, the slot number first, and then the item stack. So we can do that and that. And there we go. Now our inventory will be full of dirt. And all we have to do is open the inventory for the player. And to do that, it's very simple. You do player dot open, not open book, open inventory. And then here you can put in your inventory name. And there we go, guys. It's that simple. Now that's all I'm going to show you for this episode, but if you want to get a little more in detail here and say, let's say you have buttons in your GUI, so let's say you click on a diamond block and it brings you to the next page of something. So whenever you click on the diamond block, you have to check for the player interact event, and you have to make sure that the player, or the player is clicking on an item to not get any errors, and then after that, you'll have to make sure to check the title of the GUI. Compare the title of the GUI the player is clicking in to the title that you made your GUI. Because uh, that's the best way I found of doing it. Is comparing the titles of the GUIs to see if the player is clicking on the button. And then you just have to check to see if the player is clicking on your uh, diamond block or whatever your button was. And then you can just cancel the event after that and then open up the new GUI screen. Hopefully that made sense. Um, I'm going to go ahead and hop in game here and show you guys what's going on. Alright guys, we're in the game now and we're going to type in slash GUI dirt and see what happens. What? Oh, I didn't build the project. Oh my gosh. Alright, now that I built the project, it works. And as you see, we hover over our dirt. It's named free dirt. And it says this dirt was free and we can go ahead and open it up again it'll have the same amount of dirt that you did the first time so that's great now we got all this free dirt and our lives are completely done we're made for the rest of our lives we have no all right hello guys sorry about that nvidia hates me and stopped my recording luckily it was in the outro section so it wasn't too big of a deal but uh, anyways guys, if you uh, thought this video was helpful at all, let me know down in the comments. If you need any help with anything else, like if you need 
um, a video explanation on that advanced thing I was talking about where you check to see if a player clicks on a specific item. Let me know and I can help you guys out with that. And anyways, that's all for now. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.